Hi, it's Nigel Griffiths here, IBM Power Systems in Europe. In this movie we'll be looking at the Java Performance Advisor. Everybody likes a bit of advice, so why don't you get the advisor to look at your large Java programs, and there's a lot of big Java programs out there running a lot of our workloads these days, and it will tell you about some possible configuration improvements to improve the performance. So who wrote it? Well, it's one of the top developers in the AX Performance Tools Lab. If you actually look at the website where you download it, you can actually see his name, but I didn't tell you that, right? You can go to the big long URL here, or I've created a tiny URL, Advisor Java, and you can go there, have a look at the simple instructions on how to use this, that's what I've done, and then I made this movie. Or you can just carry on and look at the movie, and you can watch me do it. Okay then, let's go to the tiny URL for the Advisor Java. So we have the Java Performance Advisor Wiki, part of the development works AOX uh, wiki website. Lots of information here about downloading the uh, gzip file, untarring it, setting its permissions, and uh, then it needs you to find a particular Java process. You can use the ps command to do that. And then there's the rather complicated uh, syntax, although it's not too complicated once you have a look at it. You've actually got lots of clues down here. Uh, one is E, deciding how much of an expert you are and if you're competent to use some of the more complicated options. Uh, test and uh, production. This allows them to decide how aggressively they'll try and uh, tune the environment. Production is tuned less. And primary and secondary. This means whether this is the most important process um, on the machine and so you may again want to make this one work particularly well other options like the output file I think are, are optional and the last thing you need to put in is the PID of the process it wants to have a look at. Down at the bottom we have an example of some of the output, we'll have a look at our own in a minute and we have the link to download the Java file so we'll do that now. Do you want to save it? Absolutely and it's saved. I'll put that in a directory and we'll have a look at what we got. So here's our file at 91k, and I unzipped it to the tar file, and this is the content of the tar file. The JPAPL, I think, is the this file here, is the the one that you run on the AX machine. Okay, so here's my machine, and we'll do uh, an unzip of that, and we'll untar that. To a subdirectory, neat and tidy, good practice. So here are the 17 files or so. This is the jpa.pl command that we run to collect the data. Let's have a quick look, see what that is. Oops, we're in the wrong directory, so we go to the jpa directory, do that again. It's a shell script. Now I've actually looked inside that and it's 200 lines of Perl script. It immediately starts the Perl interpreter as it starts the script. Next we need the process ID of a nice big Java process. Well this is uh, running systems director so we have some nice big processes. We have the typical Java command line um, nothing short of bonkers in my humble opinion. Uh, repeated stuff all over again and again and again and if we have a look through that I've actually only got two big processes here If we scroll back, here's the top one. It's got uh, 8 minutes of CPU time, the other one only had one. And yet we got opt IBM director uh, runtime environment bin Java and a load of these uh, libraries or classes in here have uh, systems director in them. Okay, this looks like the process we need with a nice big process ID. JPA. So I check the parameters. I'm going to go for the most aggressive way of doing this to see what it produces. Um, I'm an expert, so give me all the options. Uh, test, I can be fairly aggressive. Primary, this is the most important process we have. And the PID. And we're the root user, so we have that nice big uh, warning message in here. And um, do I agree? You have to make up your own mind, and I'll go yes. And we're finished. Okay. 
and we have a JPL output.xml. Now I have to get that to a browser, so I'm going to copy that back to my uh, workstation and uh, start the browser on that file. Well, I've copied the file now to my workstation, that's uh, Windows XP, uh, but I did rename it, I called it My JPA Output, because I noticed there's already a JPA Output here. This is a uh, sample output that you can use to uh, have a quick look. So all we need now to do is to click this uh, XML file, and this will start our browser. Okay, it's asking me to uh, confirm I wanted to use these extra um, features. That actually just allows some pop-ups. If we click on particular items, then um, it'll give us some hints and tips. So I'll say yes to those. And we can have a look around uh, what's going on in here. Uh, first you want to do is to check this is the machine that you thought it was from. And uh, when it was taken, then we can uh, look down here. So you see it is about the machine and the size of the logical partition. And uh, we've got some green signals uh, here. So it's saying yes, the uh, LPAR is uh, large enough. And it will recommend changes if it thinks it's too small. Okay, we'll scroll down a bit further. We've got uh, things about AIX in here. Now remember I chose it to tell me uh, absolutely everything, even if it's quite aggressive. So some of these things we may want to... Um, ignore um, or may not change in practice we have to make up our own mind rather than it selecting out things that are quite um, advanced okay so it says here that the uh, the user stack size for the Java process as I clicked on it is bringing up a little hint there uh, why is it important and how to modify that it's in the AIX etc security limits well, we know that file okay and it's saying at the moment that the stack size is um, 4 million and it recommends that being uh, unlimited. So we can make a decision on that. If we look over at uh, the other part of the page here, I'll scroll across. It's got some other th things in here in red. It says the uh, Java Virtual Machine is currently 64 bit. And it's got an explanation here saying that um, if you're not using a big enough process, then there's a disadvantage of being 64-bit. Um, all your numbers and pointers are larger. Um, and it was recommended the 32-bit. And in this case, it's IBM Systems Director, and it's supplied as a 64-bit application, so we're not going to change the bitness, but there is a possibility there. Of course, I've only got one user using that at the moment. Um, of course, the process may get much larger if I had uh, half a dozen or a dozen different systems administrators using it. It says here that the initial heap size is um, half a gigabyte, and it recommends starting off with a bigger number than that. Of course, the heap will grow over time, but it means the uh, systems director will have to... Uh, it takes a, bit, a little bit of a performance hit as it uh, dynamically allocates the extra memory as it needs it. Everything else in here looks uh, green, so we're not going to worry about them. We can click on these to actually find out uh, more information about what they all mean and some of the possibilities, learn a little bit about Java tuning anyway. Uh, that's it, I think, from the uh, Systems Director perspective. Um, they seem to have uh, most things right and there's not a great deal of information here which is going to drastically improve the performance as you might expect. And that's it. The advisor will look at your large Java programs and the configuration of your machine and come up with some configuration changes that may help.